However, in the Western countries, people blaspheme our prophet, peace be upon him. I always felt that the response from the Muslim Ummah, the OIC, I always felt it was lack lacking. And therefore, I, I wanted to use this platform that the OIC owes a responsibility. Us heads of the states, we have a responsibility to the Muslim world. When anyone in the Western world blasphemes our prophet, peace be upon him. It is a failure of the OIC that we have not been able to explain to the Western countries that the love and affection that we feel for our Holy Prophet, that how he lives in our hearts. It was up to us to explain to the Western people that the, the amount of pain they cause us when they ridicule, ridicule or mock our Holy Prophet. And uh, we must know that in the West, people do not treat religion the way we Muslim, the Muslim world treats uh, uh, Islam. We live our religion. In the Western world, they have a completely different attitude to the, to the way they approach religion. And so therefore, on this, uh, Mr. Chairman, I would like to say from this platform that we must in the forums like the United Nations, forums like the European Union, we must explain to them that they cannot hurt the sentiment of 1.3 billion people under the garb of freedom of expression. The Jewish community has very successfully explained to the world that any misinterpretation of the Holocaust gives them pain. And so, the Western world views hol Holocaust with a lot of sensitivity. But that sens sensitivity is lacking when it, they come to talking about our Holy Quran or, uh, uh, or the, our Prophet, peace be upon him. So I feel that this forum must take it upon itself to explain to the Western world through these forums what it means to us and, and how we love and respect our Holy Prophet. Secondly, uh, the Western world has very, uh, through ignorance, partly, and uh, willfully, they have equated Islam with terrorism, or radical Islam with terrorism. I feel that th this has done a tremendous amount of disservice to the Muslim community. Religion has nothing to do with terrorism. No religion allows uh, killing of uh, innocent human beings. But by doing this, uh, two things have happened uh, uh, against the Muslims. Number one, it has led to Islamophobia. Whenever there is uh, a Muslim involved in terrorism, the, the word Islamic terrorism or radical Islam, the moment that is uh, referred to define terrorism, the people in the West cannot distinguish between a moderate Muslim and a, and a radical Muslim. So they, the whole suspicion is raised against Muslims everywhere. This attack in New Zealand by this gunman who goes into a mosque and shoots 50 innocent people is because they, they cannot understand that Islam has nothing to do with terrorism. And they have this indoctrination that somehow whenever a Muslim is involved in ter terrorism, it's something to do with Islam. Before 9-11, 80% of the suicide uh, terrorist attacks were by Tamil Tigers. But no one blamed Hinduism for it, and quite rightly, because religion had nothing to do with it. It was a political struggle. When the Japanese in the Second World War indulged in Kamike's uh, 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 pilots who blew themselves up on American ships, but no one blamed the Japanese religion for it. So uh, uh, this is my second point. I feel that uh, A, it causes Islamophobia because we, the heads of Muslim states, have not been able to explain to the West, not powerfully enough, that Islam has nothing to do with terrorism. 
political struggles have everything to do with terrorism. And, and the second disadvantage which the Muslim world has as a result of this, I'm afraid, I'm afraid is that uh, Muslim freedom struggles or mu Muslim freedom political struggles are delegitimized when they are termed as a, uh, because of Islamic radicalism. For instance, in after 9-11, the people of Kashmir have been conducting a, a political struggle for their freedom. But after 9-11, it was oppressed, calling it Islamic radicalism and Islamic terrorism. Similarly, the Palestinians. After 9-11, the Palestinians were oppressed, uh, using the Israeli government, used the word uh, Islamic terrorism. So uh, this is my second point. I feel that from this forum, we must take a stand. We must de-link terrorism with Islam. My third point, uh, uh, Mr. Chairman, is about uh, the Muslim world not paying much attention to science and technology. Uh, we have an organization called Comstech. I feel that uh, we are on the verge of another industrial revolution with artificial intelligence uh, and uh, blockchain, new, new technologies coming in. We must not be left behind again. And I feel that uh, we as a Muslim world must spend more of our resources in uh, strengthening ourselves in this field. Uh, we must pay more uh, attention to education, to quality education, to, uh, to universities. Uh, despite having all the resources, I'm afraid we lag behind. And I think from the OIC platform, it would be a good opportunity for us to concentrate on uh, on, on spending more on science and technology. Finally, Mr. Chairman, I would like to say that this is 50 years of uh, OIC, and uh, we all must again uh, reiterate that how this uh, organization came was because of uh, the Palestinians being deprived of their homes, their rights, their human rights, their democratic rights. And so we reiterate again that there is no solution but a two-state two state solution in Palestine. Uh, they must, East Jerusalem must become the capital of the, uh, for the Palestinian uh, people. And uh, the Golan Heights must be returned as the 1967 borders, uh, which all the international conventions, the United Na Nation resolutions uh, say so. Similarly, I feel that in Kashmir, the people of Kashmir again have not been... Uh, uh, given their right, their right to self-determination, as was guaranteed by the world community in 1948 through a UN resolution. Uh, the people of Kashmir recently have suffered a lot of oppression, uh, and I do feel that us as a body, the OIC, must stand with uh, the oppression that is going on in the Muslim world. Uh, I finally want to thank uh, again King Salman bin Ab Abdulaziz Al Saud for his great hospitality. Uh, I especially want to thank uh, uh, the, we had the great opportunity uh, to go into, um, to visit the Raza Rasul in Medina yesterday. And from me and my delegation, we want to say that it get, gave us the greatest happiness and pleasure to be able to visit the mosque. Thank you very much.